everybody, we are doing a Zelda ranking tier list. Every Zelda from SS to D. Because Bob screwed it up. Over on my podcast, Bob ranked every Zelda game and I had to sit there and listen to it as he got it all completely wrong. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. I give this one, I'm gonna say C. Whoa! Yeah. If you had to see that too, I apologize. And also this is gonna be eye bleach for you as I correctly and accurately rank every Zelda on a tier list. I don't know if you know this about me, I'm actually a huge Zelda guy. 35 years of saving the princess, 35 years of making new friendship. I keep meaning to make a Zelda collection wall or something, but I don't really have the space. So right now, everything is stuck in here. Yeah, here's a lot of my Zelda games. This is honestly one of the best ones. You know what he ranked pretty low? Majora's Mask. Majora's Mask, right? Yeah. D, baby. Oh, wow! <laughs> Still not over it. Episode 50, that was. A whole year we've been doing that. Also, there's a couple other things just before we get started that I want to tell you about. Over on my highlights channel, I re-uploaded my entire Breath of the Wild crowd control stream in highlights forms. It's a ton of fun. As I adventure today, you'll be able to interact with the game. Okay. What? This is not gonna go well. I don't. <laughs> I'm walking. Oh, and I'm invisible. Invisible, I can deal with. Invisible, I'm okay. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do nothing! But when Tears of the Kingdom comes out, I'm doing it again. Forgot I had this sealed. So go follow me on Twitch if you want to see me play through Tears of the Kingdom. Look how many freaking Zelda games I have. You know how many of these Bob played? Four. Lastly, I would really, really appreciate it if you could check out the sponsor of the video, Gamer Subs. There's a link down below. You can get 10% off by using code BEATEMUPS. It's spring, almost summer. They have a lot of really refreshing flavors like mango meta and, and, and melon. Two of my absolute favorite flavors. They just released a bunch of new shaker cups as well. They're all zero calories. It tastes like you're just drinking juice. I don't know how they do it. It's so light and delicious. It directly supports the channel every time you use code beat-em-ups. I'd really appreciate it. Now I gotta correctly and accurately, are you watching Bobathon? Rank every Zelda. All right, we're gonna begin with The Legend of Zelda on NES, a classic. In many ways, we're still following this blueprint of what this game tried to capture in its time. You're going around the whole world of, I assume Hyrule, I actually don't know that, and looking for the princess. I actually don't know. I actually don't know what the story is here. But like, there's a shops where you buy stuff, there's puzzles and dungeons. This is the blueprint for every future Zelda. It's not S, S, or S though, because playing it is a snooze and it's only two hours long. But I do think that it deserves a solid A. It literally set the blueprint for everything to come. Can you imagine if Adventure of Link was the first one and they tried to follow that blueprint? This game is by far, in my opinion, the worst game in the lineup of main title Zelda games. Look at this thing. Oh boy, what were they thinking? Am I looking at Zelda or am I looking at Mario? I mean, did the first Mario come out, like Super Mario NES, and it had like a ton of success and Nintendo were like, oh, that, that's what we should have done with Link. Horrible. Some people would try and argue that it's actually a hidden gem and that it's actually good and you should play it, but it's so far removed from any other Zelda experience that you can be a massive fan of Zelda and dislike this game. And that is also my opinion. I also dislike that game. That game is bad. I don't care what you have to say. If there was an F tier, I would put it in F. I actually think I might make an F tier, but we already have a red in S for some reason. So next, we have Zelda Wind Waker Sail the Seven Seas. You might know this about me. This is one of my favorite Zelda games. But you might also know this about me. I'm really good at being non-biased. So I can love something like Wind Waker and consider it one of the best games of all time and not necessarily put it in S tier. Thankfully though, it is an S tier game. So it's gone right up there, baby. It might even be close to SS, but I feel like SS has to be preserved for a special something. But as like a young teenage boy to play this bright, vibrant, colorful, popping out of the screen game, you're about to jump on a boat and sail around the seven seas. And there's seemingly endless amounts of little islands and large towns to go and explore and to find and characters to interact with and 
quests gets an S tier alone based on the way that Ganon gets destroyed. Link literally drives his sword into the skull of Ganon and leaves him there to rot. My guy, Cartoon Link is by far the most brutal and vicious of any of the Links. You think this little guy is a cute little chicken chaser? Nah, this guy will stab you in the forehead and leave you for the worms. So that one gets an S tier. That's a good game. All right, Hyrule Warriors is one of them. What do they call them, actually? The Warriors games, where there's like a thousand enemies and you, you slash them all and it's like action and fast pace and micromanaging the map. It's just not really a Zelda. So I don't know why it's here. That said the first one was a little stinky it was like a c it was a little stinky it was fine it wasn't great it wasn't bad all right four swords gamecube and gba i'm a man of the people what i mean to say is we shopped at the dollar store and i definitely didn't have any other friends that had both the gba and the gamecube and link cables and controllers and i didn't even know what was going on with that series because i never got to play any of them because it was just it was confusing and too much money you know what i mean so i I actually don't have an opinion on four swords hold on we'll do a poll and i want it to be a b c or d as the options i'll let chat decide this one so apparently it got a b we got to do that whole thing again now but for the gba version and now, and now, now they get they to get do, it do it again, 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 again for gba, for GBA. All right, this one got a hard C. So I guess if I ever played a Four Swords adventure, I am going to GameCube. Triforce Heroes. I bought this when it came out. I couldn't make it stick, man. I was trying to play it. I didn't get very far. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wild and this is a hidden gem. But like, yeah, I was not having a good time. Like, I'm willing to put it down here in D. Just based on probably the five hours that I played, if that. All right, moving on then. We have Minish Cap. This game is not made by Nintendo. It's one of the core Zelda games that's actually made by somebody else. Capcom! This game is a banger. It's fantastic. You get this little talking Minish Cap guy and then you can shrink and you can grow. But at the same time, it's a classic Zelda game that you know and love. It's cute. It's fun. It's adorable. I don't think I could put it any lower than the original because I think it's definitely way more fun. So I think by going by my own standards, good. I also don't think it's as average as whatever Ford Swords and adventure was so i'm good to put it in a oh, dragon roast island chat all right so we have ocarina of time Ugh. My guy, everything up to Ocarina of Time was just filling time for the real Zelda game to come along. It is a perfect game. Mwah. You got to remember too, a lot of you might be really young. You might not remember that up to that point, games look like this. Every single video game up till Ocarina looked like this or worse. This is what we had to play as kids growing up. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, we have this and we have this and we have like cutscenes and story and music and dungeons and fishing. It was incredible. The combat, the action, the adventure for its time was so much more impressive than even Breath of the Wild for its time. So where do I put it? Double S, my guy, double S. It is arguably the best Zelda game. It solidified everything that Zelda was trying to be up to that point. Now we get to Majingle's Mask. This is the 3DS version, but that's fine. This game came shortly after Ocarina, but Majingle's Mask took you to a whole new realm, a whole new world to explore, a whole new open area to explore. So while they did reuse a lot of the same assets and it was on the same engine, we weren't going back to the same game again. That's why I think this game really stands out on its own as something special. I will say that it is a little annoying to play because it has a day and night mechanic where at the end of every third day the moon crashes and resets everything and you have to start again what's interesting about it is all the characters and all the npcs are on their own day and night cycle they do their own things at the same time every single day which is very interesting and i don't think anything like that had been done before but it meant to solve the puzzles you really had to learn everybody's pattern and it's a really interesting
interesting idea, but it is very annoying the amount of days where you can't figure out what to do next and then the game resets and you're like, oh, well, now I got to start trying to figure it all out again. It's very annoying, but it is very unique. It is very fun. I'm actually torn between A and S, but this is, again, based on my personal preference and what I like in Zelda games. I like when I set out as Link and I go on a big adventure. Majora's Mask was more one big puzzle game. It's closer to Wind Waker in quality and fun than these two games for sure. So I think if I had to put it somewhere, I'm putting it in S. It might be like an S minus situation. Next, we have Breath of the Wild. Woo! This game is literally not only a reimagining of what a Zelda game can be, but it's also really just going back to the basics. It's going back to, again, that original NES Zelda, giving you a full world to explore full of biomes, which is what the original Zelda had. A desert area, it had the forest area, it had the plains. You have all of that here. There's a couple reasons people point to not liking it. One, dungeons, like lack of dungeons. The idea of Breath of the Wild is that it's your adventure to do whatever you want in any order you want. The only really dungeons that you get are the Divine Beasts, which essentially act as dungeons, but I will admit they were a little tedious and not exactly the most fun. The other one was weapons breaking, but I love the weapons breaking. I've always liked the idea of that because there are so many weapons in the game. It keeps you rotating and moving through them all, continually looting and trying new ones. I just think they broke way too easily. Other than that, I think it's a perfect Zelda game. I don't really know what else to say. Wonderful Zelda game that I'm going to put before Ocarina of Time. It's a double S. Moving on, we have Oracle of Seasons and Ages. I've only played one of these. I'm 99% sure it was Seasons, but definitely have good memories playing. It. I'm not sure where to put this one. Well, it's probably here, right? They were really good. What if we split the difference? And then when we share this screenshot on Twitter, every comment being, why are they separate? <laughs> Moving on, we have Twilight Princess. Zelda Twilight Princess is a fantastic game. And even a bad Zelda is a great video game. I've always said that. When I die and you share the little floating head of like me with my quote underneath, I want it to be even a bad Zelda game is a great video game. I like it a lot, borderline on loving it. Something I find really interesting about this game is it was the first Zelda on Wii. They wanted the Wiimote to be the attack and most people in the world are right-handed, but Link is left-handed. They had to switch Link to be right-handed in this game. The GameCube version of this game, he was still left-handed and that is the actual version of this game. The Wii version, the way they fixed it, rather than recoding the game, they just flipped the whole game around. <laughs> if you played it on Wii, you actually played the whole game game backwards. That upsets me. I am left-handed and growing up as a massive Zelda fan, when I found out Link was left-handed, I connected with him even more. I was like, wow, I'm just like the hero of courage. I'm going to save the world one day. But then they changed him to be a stinky commoner. It's a great game. I didn't love all the doggy parts. I didn't love having to find all the spirit orb things. I always felt like that dragged on way too much. I liked the bright, vibrant, colorful Zeldas. So when this hit, I was like, oh, it's dark. It's gritty but it is Zelda and it is great. For me personally, it's not SS up here with Breath of the Wild and Ocarina. It's just S. It's a high S. I like Twilight Princess and I like Majora's. Pretty similar. All right, moving on. We have Link to the Past. When I got a Super Nintendo in my mid-20s, when I became a collector, the first game I plugged into that console that I pulled out of the little case, little little plastic case that I got with it from the, from the video game convention, I blew that cartridge, I stuck it in my Super Nintendo, I flicked it on. It was Earthbound. I couldn't wait to play Earthbound and I spent a lot of money on it. You know the second game I played though? Not even kidding. The second game I played was Link to the Past and I fell in love. As far as pixel art 2D adventure games go, this still stands the test of time as one of the absolute greatest. I'm gonna put it right up in S as well. It's absolutely incredible. It's a completely different style of game the Twilight Princess, but I might even like it more if not on same category, same board with it. Now 
probably got to get a little harsh for a second because the next one I am an avid hater of. I'm sorry to say, but I feel like nobody really loves these games. Maybe you like them. I didn't play much of Spirit, but Phantom Hourglass I did finish and it was the worst Zelda I have ever finished. My biggest gripe with Phantom Hourglass was the pacing of the game and that there was one main dungeon in the first area that you had to keep coming back to. And I remember just getting so bored of the backtracking and having to go through the same dungeon over and over because you unlocked a new area of the dungeon every time you went away and did something else. It's not the worst game ever. I just didn't like it for a Zelda game. There were some really unique and interesting things about the game. It was on the DS and they did find some really unique and innovative ways of playing. Like right here, you can see when you're doing a bomb chew, you have to flip to the touch screen and like draw the line. And there were puzzles in this game where like you actually had to physically walk up in the game to the torch and blow on the DS microphone like and it blew out the light. But overall, it was a poopy smoopy game and I hated it. So Spirit Tracks is D and this is like high D too. When I got to Spirit Tracks, I was like, maybe I'll like this one. There's a train in it. Maybe this is cool. And I, I just couldn't. I got like five hours in and I was like, oh no, it's Phantom Hourglass again. Then we have Skyward Sword. I loved when I played it the first time back in the day. I finished it in like a weekend. I couldn't stop. I was only a tiny bit disappointed that it felt kind of like Wind Waker in the essence that here we are several years later, like 10 years later. And once again, a lot of the places in the sky to explore are just little tiny floating rocks. I really didn't spend any time flying around to the sky islands. I thought they were pointless, which I thought was kind of a wasted opportunity even at the time. I replayed it on Switch and I did not have nearly as much fun as I remembered having. Skyward Sword did add a lot of concepts that we ended up seeing in Breath of the Wild. You had crafting with things and, and whatever you would find around the world. You could craft certain things. It also introduced the stamina bar. I would say it's like, it's A, you know? A bad Zelda game is still a great game. I would put it down here with like diminished caps and the original NES Zelda and the, and the seasons. All right, we got two left here. I'm now realizing we're missing some Zeldas on this list and I feel like we've come this far. We have Zelda DX, but we don't have the new one. Oh, and we don't have Link Between Worlds either. I'm just gonna have to Photoshop it in later then, I guess. Anyway, Link's Awakening on the original Game Boy. So this was the original Link's Awakening. Well, actually, technically, I think not the original because the original was black and white on Game Boy. Fantastic game. And if you don't know if you've played the new one, it is a full, essentially one for one remake. I mean, a little different. I love the art style of this game. I think it's amazing. I think it's beautiful but both of these are essentially the same game. I would rate the new one higher than this one just because I preferred the visuals, but I think it's as fun as Minish Cap and some of these high tier Zelda titles that we have up here. It is borderlining S tier, but I just don't think it's as good as Link to the Past. Link Between Worlds is fire. It is S. It is S. <laughs> it is everything Link to the Past had to offer with some fun new ideas and concepts like the way that the weapons and the uh, utility items items work, going to the shop and renting them. Really interesting. That is one of the best Zelda games, obviously S tier. It's as good as Link to the Past, in my opinion, as good. I think that's it. I think we did the whole thing. That is my current official Zelda tier list ranking of 2023. My opinions and my nostalgia is a moving target. Sometimes I wake up and I swear to God, I feel differently about everything I did the day before. So maybe this will change, but I feel like every time I do this, I get relatively in the same ballpark. You know what I mean? So thank you for watching. I appreciate it. I had fun doing this with you guys live. I hope you had a good time. I hope I didn't upset too many people.